put off by how long this video is, don't worry, I try to jam pack my videos with as much content and as much detail as I possibly can. Anything I feel I can comment on and that I feel you might be interested in, I pretty much put in the video. I try not to repeat myself and talk fairly fast. If the video is too long for you, I have recorded a shorter version and the link will be in the description box. Far Cry 3 Blood Dragon Game Review 2007 Retro Futuristic You're facing off against your former commander Sloan and his army of Omega Force as you try to find out what he's doing with the Blood Dragons and the blood of the Blood Dragons. This does not have an awful lot of plot, it's just shooting people a lot. And what there is of plot is very willfully dumb, fitting in every cliche from the, the genre. And yeah, the, both the opening and the ending of this are absolutely awesome. Now, full, disclo full disclosure, I have not played Fa Far Cry. I might. I got this because I the, the style of it really appealed to me. And what really put it over the edge was that Michael Bean voices the badass protagonist. And I love Michael Bean, especially in this kind of badass action kind of thing. Yeah, he voices Cyber Commando Rex Power Colt who is indeed part cyborg, and yeah, frankly, cyborgs and part cyborgs are all over this game. Now, you are aided by an AI, and the very strongholds you come upon have an AI, you know, controlling them as well, and, you know, saying if, if the status of something changes significantly. And there are yet more AIs in this game. Now, Michael Bean loved recording this, and it really shows. It's a solid performance through and through. And in general, this is very clearly a labor of love. Now, your main ally is Dr. Darling, a strong female character, of course, at times she weakens significantly, as per genre conventions. She worked for Sloan and, you know, thus knows a lot about him and his organization. And, yeah, now she aids you by, you know, radio message, messaging, ongoing. And in general, the, the characters here are memorable. Sloane is just deliciously evil and just this completely crazy, you know, yeah, typical. Like, he, he keeps going on about how the politicians are too weak. And, you know, yeah, his, his plans for the world will make it a better place. And, and this kind of thing, yeah, and uh, by the way, this is taking place after the apocalypse has had an apocalypse, after Vietnam War II. You might already be able to tell, I love this game, it just, you know, to, to, to start off with, you know, this has a very distinct tone, and some will really like it, some won't. If you watch the trailers, you'll really get an, you know, a, a great idea of that because it really communicates as well. You know, not only the the you know actual gameplay footage, but like one of the trailers has this really Saturday morning cartoon kind of thing, and yeah, they just they really tell you exactly the the kind of. Yeah, the, the style of this, the tone. Now, yeah, as such, it, this will not be for everyone, but in my opinion, it's well worth doing something with, you know, creative expression that is for a specific group, even if that group is not the majority. The important thing is to make it very clear that 
yeah, that it is, you know, that, that this is the tone, this is the specific group it's marketing to, and this very much does make that clear. And, yeah, you know, this is, like, big, neon, over-the-top, fun, black comedy, filled to the brim with references, one-liners and charm, a comedic parody tribute to the 80s and 90s, early 90s, action flicks. And, yeah, it makes you the unstoppable hero of one of those, you know, an Arnie or a Sly, you know, very commando Rambo the sequels, Robocop, you know, yeah, very much, and I'm not going to give away, I'm going to try not to give too many of the references away because they are priceless, but I will say that my very favorite ones, especially the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles one, and the Rambo ones, and the Rocky ones are phenomenal. Now, this also has a, you know, also has the flavor of early shooters and early action games. And, yeah, Saturday morning cartoons like G.I. Joe, He-Man, Transformers. And, and I should also mention, one of the movies that also takes a lot of notes for, from is Terminator 1. You know, you, and you see even in the trailers, this, you know, dark sky, really apocalyptic, post-apocalyptic, and, you know, lasers flying through the air, you know, brightly colored, again, neon, and, yeah, again, if, you know, if, if these, you know, if this doesn't appeal to you, yeah, this game is very much not for you. Everywhere you go, you are running into cyborgs, mutant animals, Blood Dragons, which I'll get into, lasers, and retro-futuristic -fu technology. This is very much a power fantasy. Now, nostalgia and outside-of-the-box thinking does, of course, not automatically equal good, but, you know, quality. But this does actually earn the very positive reception it's gotten. You know, it's it's not... You know, sometimes when you do the... when when it's kind of a throwback or the like, you know, some will defend defend it against flaws by saying, well, it's supposed to be, you know, it's not supposed to be good, it's supposed to be in this, so, you know, if there are plot holes or, you know, continuity and cliches and such, like, as if all of them can just be, you know, explained away uh, in by saying, you know, but it belongs in this genre and that has plenty of, you know, you should still try to make something good. And they do here, you know, when when it might make for a worse game if they completely went by genre conventions and such. Yeah, they do actually make the decision to say, okay, this part is going to be, you know, less... Yeah, you know, as an example, you have a minigun, you, you get a minigun in this, and where, you know, when you watch, for example, Commando, it appears like that thing has limitless ammo, and, yeah, in this, it does not have, when they very easily could have done that, you know, and, like, the bone arrow doesn't have that many extra arrows, so, yeah, you know, it does make decisions that are very specifically to make the game better where, you know, the movies based on, the, the movies that this is based on go in a different direction, and that, you know, it respects that some things that work in movies don't necessarily work as well in games and such. Now, this is very much cyberpunk, and it goes back and forth between really owning that it is this tribute and being self-aware. And it is, of course, very much a gimmick. And this has, I would argue it's the good kind, but a lot of bad and some even awful jokes. Gratuitous swearing. A lot of people say this is what Duke Nukem Forever should have been. I've not played that yet, but 
everything I hear about that game says that I would probably agree if I had played it. Among the cliches is that you have someone to avenge the... Yeah, I mentioned that, you know, the, the bad guy is your former boss who's gone insane. There are... Some of them come fairly late. I shouldn't really give away, but... Yeah, it, it really fits everything you might expect in there. The, yeah. The given that you know there has been a nuclear war, the a lot of the earth has been destroyed, and yeah, and this has one of the the best things about this is the excellent heavy heavily synthesized soundtrack, which takes some music from the films that it references, and yeah, remixes some of those tracks. Yeah, the, you know, even if you don't like much of anything else in this, yeah, if if you want music that really is, you know, tribute to those, to, to the genre, yeah, this absolutely delivers that. Now, the... The cutscenes are these 8-bit game ones, and yeah, they, they're they too long right from the, the get-go, again, like in those games and such, and if you find that too frustrating, you know, you can skip each of them, you know, press enter, then escape, you know, voila. Now... One critical review said that this lacks the cohesion between tone, art decoration, gameplay, and, and gameplay to make it truly memorable. I would still argue that it is very memorable, but I can definitely see what he means by that. And yeah, this is very much a love it or hate it kind of game. It doesn't take itself seriously. Which again, you know, doesn't mean that it's all, yeah, you know, it's still a great game. Now, because of the limited content and variation, it does get to be monotonous fairly quickly, and you probably shouldn't play for long stretches at a time. Now, it can be fairly slow. It's linear and I'm told more streamlined than a, a more streamlined Far Cry. And you know, it's the same enemies over and over. Just in general, there are too few enemies, vehicles, guns for you to use and environments in this, but you can forgive that in part because it's not very long, so you know, you might not really notice the the you know the lesser qualities of this and it's very inexpensive you know this is essentially a DLC and it's very impressive for a DLC it's just it was released as a excuse me as a standalone you, you know you don't need Far Cry 3 to play this you don't need anything other than this to play it and yeah you gotta look past that fact and note that yeah, the, the price and just, yeah, this is a DLC and it's a very impressive DLC. The, it's, among other things, it's a big island for 15 bucks and it's very much worth the price. Now, you can continue playing once you've completed it, but there is not an awful lot to do. Basically, you will always be able to hunt the various animals on the island and just go around exploring and... Yeah. 
that yeah, once you've gotten collectibles and completed the levels and side missions, that is more or less what's left. Which does still, you know, yeah, there there is something you can do. Now, yeah, the, as as has been noted, you know, with as with you know other open world games, it can be annoying to have to, to you know yeah to to move from where you are to where the the content is you know that's yeah that's essentially like just filler you might almost say now it took me three and a half hours to complete the to complete the campaign and six and a half hours to complete all side missions and get all collectibles now this is based on my having purchased the maps that show where the collectibles are and obviously it will take longer if you don't get those and that is entirely up to you whether or not to get them and I know I really shouldn't have taken that shortcut but yeah when when it's there and it's not actually like cheating and and it is something like this where you really have to explore to find things. Yeah, I, I prefer to, to take that. And I will also say, if you don't get the maps and you play as long as it would take to, to get everything. I should also note, I have not gotten all the achievements. But, yeah, you know, it, it if you were to play for as long as it would take without the maps, to get all collectibles, then you might find it, you know, to be too long. Now, others have pointed out, it is essentially fairly shallow, and the joke can wear somewhat thin after about an hour. Now, but yeah, as I've already mentioned, I want to mention some of that, but but yeah, it's it's about a quarter of the price of Far Cry 3. So yeah, considering that, it's there there is a lot here. And it is not actually connected to Far Cry 3. It has Far Cry 3 in the title because they share an engine. And of course that didn't stop some people from saying that this absolutely ruined Far Cry 3 for them, which it's completely unrelated. If you absolutely must play everything that shares a title with, you know, what you enjoy, then, you know, either you play everything that shares the title with what you enjoy, or you consider, you know, some things possible to ruin the things you enjoy if they're connected. If you do both, you are setting yourself up for disappointment. Now, the, the collectibles unlock various, you know, they, they improve your weapons in various ways. And, you know, you can, if, if any of these, you know, if you don't want to use them, for one thing, you don't have to buy them at the store. And if you change your mind on them, you can, like you know, unequip them from the various weapons. And there are, of course, a few of them that either they're made obsolete by other, you know, upgrades, or they're just, they're okay, they're not amazing, but some of them truly are amazing. You know, they'll unlock explosive ammo. The, the shotgun can be upgraded to have four barrels, you know, which is actually, I guess it, I'm not sure it's a shotgun, it may be more of a rifle. It's the Winchester from Terminator 2, you know, and yeah, can have four barrels. And yeah, these are, yeah, some really awesome upgrades to these guns. The, and, and yeah, you know, this only has single player and only really has the campaign and then, you know, collectibles and side missions. So, yeah, you know, there, you can't go in and play 
you know, there's there's not going to be more story than, like I said, these three and a half hours worth. And yeah. Now, as others have noted, this really took a risk by making a comedy game with a 90s feel to it where today's first person shooters are more you know they tend to be deeper and more intelligent than this and the those of the 90s and it did pay off you know financially and critically and I would definitely say also quality wise there's relatively low replay value the game is set entirely at night with this darkened sky. Now, some have experienced long loading times. I never experienced that. Everything does kind of look the same, and the you know others have pointed out that the the visuals are murky and kind of unappealing. Where again, I'm told Far Cry 3 has vibrant colors, and yeah, again, I'd say if, if you don't play it for too long, too too long stretches at a time, you know, it doesn't. You don't spend enough time there that it bothers you. But again, you know, in Terminator 1, these short flashback scenes are all you really see of this really darkened sky so of course an entire game set with the darkened sky might be a little too much which again you know it's not that long and if you don't play for too long in a row then it will you know if the game had been like only have flashbacks to that then it might have felt like too little so you know the amount of time you see something in a movie it has to be greatly increased for when you're playing it in a game or it'll feel really yeah it'll feel too short it won't have an impact the and and some have noted it can be genuinely difficult to see what you are looking at to, to make it out some do like this more than Far Cry 3. This is very much an arcade game. This does require you play, which, yeah, you know, the first time you have to deal with you play, it's really frustrating. I personally haven't had too much trouble recently with you play, you know, con considering that I did play Splinter Cell Blacklist for a long time. But, you know, and, and I certainly didn't have any problems with this, but then, you know, played it for 10 hours total, so, yeah. The part of what you, part of what you do to, like, get ammo and such in this is to rip the artificial hearts out, out of dead cyborgs, you know, cyborg guards and you know, cyborg soldiers that you've killed. And yeah, that's that's pretty amazing. And yeah, I'm I'm not sure the the scientists are cyborgs. Certainly they they have masks to to protect them from the world. And while you know the guards have you know helmets and such but Rex is running around without anything covering his face so yeah it would suggest that maybe the scientists aren't but yeah but pretty much every enemy you encounter is a cyborg the this allows you to save manually some have encountered glitches I didn't particularly the the dialogue and such is nice and cheesy in this the and this has like moral lessons in between also in the dialogue in between all the death and destruction which is just hilarious you know it'll say don't litter or winners don't use drugs on like crates that you you know pass and yeah I, I do wish that it was entirely consistent like when you know on the loading stream you'll of course get hints and you know the, the, the you know tutorials and 
descriptions of collectibles and such are you know fit fit this tone but then you know the you know as the game is opening it has the you know when this is on, when this icon is on the screen it means the game is saving do not turn off you know and the regular menus and such you know they're they're perfectly normal and yeah i i wish that those were also you know also fit the tone the voice acting is great some have experienced big problems with this i didn't at all at one point you punch the core of a nuclear reactor in order to disable it and some of the one-liners you hear more than once which is a little unfortunate like collectibles sometimes you know rex will say i really hope i don't have to also collect flags and sometimes they'll say that with feathers and the thing is there are a lot of those collectibles so you will hear both of those lines a couple of times and that's really unfortunate but of course you know that is a slight reference to Assassin's Creed you know also Ubisoft most of the you know genuine like issues with this that that I've you know that I can see are basically the are, are basically very minor it's you know if you yeah if you if you don't play for too long stretches and you go in knowing and wanting this tone yeah there's not much that's really going to bother you and again you know if you watch the trailers there you also really see the you know the the colors and the visuals you know the the gameplay footage is that you know that is how the game looks and if that bothers you in the trailers then it will bother you in the game itself as well you know there is some stealth which will grant more of the XP than you know just going in guns blazing I am told there's less stealth you know this is less stealth than Far Cry Rex mocks the various tropes like I already said you know I hope I don't have to collect flags and you know rages at the opening tutorial which is intentionally both really obnoxious and really obvious and yeah you know so so literally at times he is saying what the player is thinking you know he'll, he'll also you know if like if a description of you know if, if objectives sound like kind of dumb or just repetitive you know he'll say blah blah kill blah blah and you know wait what and yeah things like that as a cyborg you can jump very high and sprint forever and faster and you can take a lot of damage when some of these really explain why you can go in guns blazing now this levels up automatically and there's no crafting you know, overall, this plays like a regular open-world first-person shooter with, you know, some some stuff and run and gun and such. You can flip off the enemy by pressing F. Uh, you know, some have said this doesn't really have any new features, you know, compared to Far Cry. And, yeah, I'm, I'm going to have to take the word with on that but I can imagine that that's the case and some said that it plays like Far Cry with some of the RPG elements streamlined now if you don't complete a level before you leave the game it, it seems like you will lose the progress you made in that level and you cannot save during missions it will only save at the checkpoints 
But you know, anytime you complete a mission or a side mission or get a collectible, it will save. You know, for the collectible, only save that. But yeah, for the other two, it will save. And if you then quit and then load, you will, you know, start out in the I think closest stronghold and yeah which I guess is also what happens when with its collectibles now in my opinion when it comes to video games you should be able to save or in the case of older games complete the entire game within about 30 minutes to 45 minutes you know this is a basic human right and yeah this always lives up to that now the and and you know i i considered this a human right before i got a fish through a channel you know carpal tunnel now, sometimes, you know, it will replay the post-mission, you know, debriefing kind of thing when you load to, you know, the place where you completed a mission, you know, of the most recently completed mission, even if you've done things after, you know, after you completed that mission. Now, this has some gore with, you know, you can blow heads off, limbs off. You have cyber vision, which allows you to zoom, and whenever you can see an enemy enough, so you may, you know, if you can only, like, see their upper body, you may have to zoom in on them a bit. You know, you can tag them, and then even when you leave cyber vision, you can see them through the wall, like, fully you know, as if there wasn't a wall between them and you. And yeah, this will also indicate what type the, you know, this particular enemy is for each of them by having an icon over their head. And this really allows you to plan your assault on this particular base. Now, you can stab with the knife and even toss shuriken when you take down enemies which requires you to surprise the enemy which either means that at least that enemy hasn't seen you yet or you're sprinting at an enemy and you know catching him off guard however keep in mind that if you're close to an enemy they can very easily knock you down you know if you didn't surprise them and you know this only costs you about a second or something but you know, if it's a, an enemy that has very powerful up-close gun, that might still really mean a lot. Or if you're, like, surrounded by enemies, so, yeah. And you can, indeed, chain takedowns. You know, if the enemy is close enough, yeah. And if you jump onto an enemy from above them, that also, you know, there's also a takedown for that. And, you know, if you're, like under a ledge that they're standing at, you know, you can kill them like that. You do want to leave the, you know, you want to be careful that it, it leaves the body around on every takedown except like the, the ledge takedown. Pretty sure each other, every other, and yeah, when the enemy sees that body, they will react. You know, you can't like dump the body or something. And yeah, you can still melee if you can't do a takedown. You'll just do like a slash with the knife. Now, it is a bit annoying that when you're trying to put out, you know, if you've caught on fire and you're trying to put it out, it'll often, often be on the same key as the one you use healing for. And both are supposed to be that you hold down the that key. And if you don't... <laughs> If you aren't careful, you might heal directly after, and, you know, of course you can heal right after because you lost, you know, you took some damage from the fire, but you might not want to heal at that point. You also, you don't carry around that many healing items. Now, you can also sprint, include, you, you can also swim, rather, including underwater, and you can 
sprint swim, you know, s swim really, really fast. Now, the, you can lure enemies for stealth by tossing Dungeons and Dragons dice. And yes, the first time the the AI does the tutorial for this, it you know when the AI does the tutorial for this, it will of course end up by calling you a nerd. You know, so yeah, because if you know what Dungeons and Dragons dice are, if you could recognize them from seeing. There's a chance you're a nerd. Now, and I say that as a nerd, not of Dungeons and Dragons, but in general. Now, you can vault and climb. You can't always see what you can climb. You know, you will basically have to go up and face that, you know, flat vertical surface to, to see if you can climb. So that's, you know, and there are definitely times where you wish you could you know climb this particular surface so yeah now you can drive land vehicles and sail there's water vehicles there's there are jeeps hovercraft jet ski and any of these you can bail out on from you know if you're going fast and there will sometimes be an infinite ammo minigun on you know a jeep or a hovercraft or such and yeah. Now, you can also, you know, fire a Gatling gun from a helicopter, which is being flown, you know, at times. And there's there's a time where a blood dragon very much helps you. I think I should leave it at that. And you know, you'll be shooting enemies in helicopters. You know, one thing I found was actually the most dangerous is to blow up an enemy vehicle while close. You know, they might drive right up to your vehicle, and if you're then firing the minigun, gun post, yeah, you know, the moment you blow them up, you also get blown up. So, yeah. Now, when you are, you know, piloting a vehicle of any kind, you, you know, at least often you'll have a free camera. It won't quite be 360 degrees because, you know, you are actually, you know, you are sitting down or standing up, but you are in that particular position. Now, there is not always a lot you can do to move fast around the island where sometimes playing this, I, you know, I almost missed the just cause kind of helicopter or jet or grappling hook that you could you know use the the vehicles would come to you very easily or be easily come by and the grappling hook especially the second one would very quickly move from place to place and you know get you further up or such but you know just cause is not better in every way than this now better than this in every way now in this, you do have to walk around if you're trying to climb a mountain. Why are you climbing a mountain? Because you're in love. Missions, you know, objectives tend to be like kill or destroy or disable this, you know, technology, tech, yeah, this tech. And you, know, you can always abort a mission you get to free roam quite early. In the missions, you tend not to get to choose between sneaking and run and gun. And they tend to be fairly linear. You cannot replay missions or side missions. Now, you know, there are three profile slots, so you can replay from the start without having lost the progress you made in another slot. Some have said that the AI is terrible. It's okay, I would say. You know, it's not... Yeah, it's, it's, it's just okay, basically. 
Now, as far as the enemy types go, you have normal type, there's, you know, and, and these will vary with different weapons, you know, close-up type who might have, like, molotovs, or rather, molotoxes, as it is in this, and, you know, heavy, which might have a flamethrower, might have a minigun, and sniper. And, yeah, enemies will use jeeps and their gun posts as well, and if you kill the, the enemies in that jeep and don't destroy the jeep, you can take over the jeep. So, yeah. And they will patrol, you know, maybe especially near strongholds in these jeeps and, you know, jeeps without gun posts as well. And they will fight scientists and have hostages in various places also when you're just moving around the island. Now, you encounter a bunch of the mutated wildlife. Some of them will attack you. It depends on the species. And there are, of course, the blood dragons, which do, in fact, shoot lasers out of their eyes. And they're, like, bigger than a grizzly bear. You know, they will slash at, you know, those that are attacking. They'll whip them with their tail. They will straight up take an, take an enemy into their mouth and eat them whole. And, you know, they, they can mess you up pretty fiercely as well. You can sneak by them. They have poor eyesight. If you crouch and just, yeah, move, don't get way too close and such. They do have a weak point, but it's on their chest. And, you know, if they're not attacking, they're, they might be walking around on all four. So you may have to let them attack you for in order to get at their weak point. So, yeah. The uh, another, you know, one, one of the side missions is to liberate the strongholds, and you know these are basically bases which where Sloan has forced scientists to work for him, and as you kill the guards, you know you free the scientists, and you know also gradually earning this base for you to use the scientists will start fighting back and you know this is a new place you can fast travel to and it opens at least one of the next you know of the two time the following two types of side missions and you know you can lure blood dragons to attack if you you know by by tossing the earlier mentioned artificial hearts and yeah basically the these bases have a mega shield, a force field, you know, covering them. But blood dragons can shoot through the the shield, and you know, yeah, if you toss a heart into the base, they will start shooting their lasers through the the force field, and yeah, the guards and the blood dragon will, you know, harm each other, and thus you know, making it easier for you to take over and also deal with the blood dragon because once the blood dragon is... once you have the base, you may have to deal with the blood dragon, especially if you let him in to the base, which, you know, you can blow up the reactor for, I think it is, or generator or something, for the mega shield, you can, you know, disable it by a you know, computer panel, and yeah, then the blood dragons can go in, and they happily will if you throw in a, you know, an artificial heart. But yeah, this artificial heart business also means that they're, you know, if they find you, they will very happily attack you, you know, as well. And you know, you can to take over base, you can snipe the guards and sneak in. You can go run and gun. Now, so so yeah. Once you have the the base, you will have to either kill or lure out the blood dragon because he will start trying to kill you and kill the scientists. And once you own the base, he will not shoot in. I realize I'm suddenly gendering that they will not shoot in. 
and the, the Mega Show will come back online automatically once you own the base, which means you're, you know, there are no enemies within the the base within the mega shield no guards and no blood dragons and just yeah in general you can you know lure them away by throwing an artificial heart it also just if you encounter them around the island and you don't want to fight them now there is an alarm as well in the bases and you can disable it or try to kill an enemy trying to reach it you know if and if you don't do either then it will start a bar that you know goes for reinforcements coming in and some bases have helicopters guarding them and some of them are out at you know out in the sea so ocean never mind so you know you can't lure a blood dragon in there and yeah, you you know, once you're close to that base, you're either swimming or you're inside the base. And in yeah, that means you can very easily be detected and not necessarily do a lot to get, you know, to, to retreat from there if you should want to. And in bases you can swap out you know any of the guns, you know, swap between the available guns. You can buy and equip upgrades for them. You can buy ammo, Kevlar, and the healing injections. And if you're out of healing injections and you try to heal, he will like weld the, you know, the the cyber arm, or he, you know, or reset the hand or the like. If you die or fail, you will respawn with the same guns and ammo, either near where you died or failed, or at the closest base or the last checkpoint or the like. Now the another side mission is hostage rescue, where you're you have to each time you have to rescue one scientist, and you know you'll prob you'll want to sneak because if you go run and gun, the moment that the guards know you're there, they will start killing the scientist, and yeah, and there is predator's path where you kill various mutated endangered animals. And you know, often this is with the the bow and arrow. And like I mentioned earlier, they may attack you. And yeah, and yeah, you can hunt any time. And on the map, you will see which territory you know has which animal. Now, others have noted it becomes too easy too soon. It does not get, it never gets Assassin's Creed easy, you know, where you can play it while half asleep and the game won't punish you. I maintain that the moment you add guns and or aiming, you can't quite streamline it to death. Close, which this isn't, but yeah, not quite to death. And if you don't think there's any challenge in this, fight a blood dragon. Fight more than one at the same time. Use your low power weapons. Yeah. And this doesn't really have fall damage, or at least I didn't encounter any fall damage. And it has three diff three difficulty settings, and it will challenge you even on easy. As far as guns go, you start out with the gun Robocop has in the the movies, you know, the heavily modified Beretta 93R. And you'll also very early get the Cobra Sniper, also, you know, from the first Robocop movie, which can be upgraded to explosive bullets, you know, like in the film as well. And you, you know, you're running around with Rambo's compact bow and arrow, which is silent and very stealthy in spite of it glowing neon. If a gun you're using isn't glowing neon, it just means you haven't upgraded it with the, the upgrade that makes it glow neon. And yeah, you know, you, you can pick up arrows that you used, especially if missed, I'm told. I mean, 
It's not like I ever miss with my arrows. And yeah, as mentioned earlier, you know, the, the Winchester rifle from Terminator 2, and it's even called the 1991 Galleria, which, you know, is of course the first place he used that. Now, you can also get a scoped submachine gun, which can be upgraded to fire laser. And, you know, C400, proximity mines. You can run around with four guns at any time, and you can swap out any of the guns for any of the others. You know, you're not forced to run around with a pistol or an SMG, for example. You'll get a flamethrower, and as mentioned, a Gatling gun, and after firing for like one or two seconds, Rex will start like yelling like, ah, as he's firing, which is awesome. And yeah, so even these very first guns do tremendous damage, fire lasers, cause explosions and such. Now, after a while, areas do feel the same. You will go to, you know, both outside and inside of buildings within bases. There are ruins and caves on the island. You get to zip line and hang glide. And you will fight some infected as well. Please comment, thumbs up, and subscribe for more content.